Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network, and welcome to another episode of Mail Call. Uh, it's been a month or two, so I um, thought I'd better do a mail call. Uh, the, the mail is still coming in, believe it or not. Um, my background has changed again, and I'm back in the basement again. Yeah, um, some things going on, life changes, I'm not going to go into it. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just make the best we can until we can do more, I guess. Uh, so, what do we got? Well, we have some new items from, um, these came to me through, um, my contact with Kitty Hawk and Panda, and I guess it's either another company or it's a, a, an associated company. But I thought I'd start off with these. Uh, an F-35B Lightning II. This is by a company called Men. Um, and it is uh, basically one of, like the, the, um, the little egg-type small craft vehicles things. Um, let me take a look. This, this one is the... Um, I'm not really sure because they're... Is it GT-20? I don't know why it would be GT, but yeah. It looks like... If, unless that looks like something else to you guys, but it looks like a GT to me. Um, and uh, another type of plane here. This one's called Mighty Dragon. Um, basically, they're all in pre-colored plastic. So this one's red uh, with some green uh, various accessory pieces on here, some clear plastic, and a small little guy, I think, head, little little uh, creature head, it looks like, for the for the pilot. And does have a decal sheet as well, and that's pretty much it. Just the, the two sprues here that make the upper and lower part of the uh, fuselage, and then some additional side pieces. But definitely is um, glue, plastic glue. I don't believe they're snapped together. Um, glue? No, it does say glue free assembly, so you can put them together without glue. And um, if I can glean any other information from this, oh, J20. It's just a J20. J-20 is a stealth fifth-generation fighter just uh, developed by the... Oh, it's a Chinese company, I guess. But I'm not quite sure how that is a J, but it is. Uh, what else did we get from Kitty Hawk? Well, we got another, another 135th scale, or sorry, 132nd scale, Mirage 2000. This is the DN model, and you can see that one is uh, got the uh, dark camo, uh, at least in this particular configuration. Uh, I'm not sure the big difference on these. I mean, these things have giant fuel uh, cells, uh, external fuel uh, cells on them, so it's like, you know, they, they definitely look a lot, well, they look pretty beefy with those on there, but, you know, they, they have some side perspective shots with without it, but, uh, and then they have another set over here, so it looks like it's got quite a few different uh, configurations in terms of de decals. It does say it includes photo brass etch. Um, we'll take a quick peek on the inside. But, you know, these boxes, they're just stacked. And, you know, this is all the way up to the top with plastic. So, yeah, I just so much plastic in these. And it keeps going. Going, going, going. Um, and they do include uh, whichever bits these are. And then some of the plain upper fuselage pieces. Some nice uh probably 3d made or uh, otherwise very fine uh jet novel things with a lot of decals in the back here um and a brass small brass photo etch so very very nice gotta put these back in order if i can get it to go back in come on baby oh Oh no, there we go, okay, very thick manual, big, big manual, uh, 47 pages, goodness, all right, so what else do we have, um, I think that was it we got from them, so the next uh, kit we got in from IBG is another Polish fighter, this is the PZL P11C, Polish fighter, and this one is in 132nd scale, so a bit of a scale uh, change. And we'll take a quick look at this too, because I'm curious how ABG scales up to 132nd scale. Um, dark 
uh, plastic, very, very dark, a little darker than aircraft manufacturers or aircraft bakers are probably used to. Thick panel lines, uh, really, really high raised uh, panel lines on these, which might be correct for this type of aircraft. But yeah, you can, I can, I can feel those babies. Um, it's got uh, underwing, uh, like thick, thick underwing ribbing too, which I think probably was accurate for this uh, aluminum construction plane. So it probably had some like ribbing on the bottom there. But you can see uh, those are the upper and lower wing. Um, side fuselage also has very uh, thick um, some ribbing as well as uh, just you know the panel lines. Panel lines are fairly small. The rivet the rivet detail is, is fairly tiny, but um, but these the ribbing on here is definitely uh, very beefy, which again may be accurate to the to the plane. Uh, so yeah, again a lot of uh, Plastic with some uh, photo etch, brass photo etch, a little small canopy, and um, decals. And then they include a nice little manual in here, partially color, at least on the front and the back. Uh, not all the way through, just black and white photos on the in, it's inside. But they do include a nice color, color profiles on the back here. So that's nice. All right. So I don't know if this is the first 132nd scale aircraft they put together. Um, maybe somebody in the comment section can clarify that. Um, I mean, they've mostly done 172nd scale, and not even a lot of 148 scale that I've seen. So that that's a that's a rarity for them. All right. So next we got in quite a few kits from Zvezda. I'm gonna leave in these here as a stand. But uh, this one is the um, Delphin Delta IV class Russian nuclear ballistic submarine. So a little bit of a change of pace from the typical Typhoon class that you see out there, but it definitely has some interesting characteristics uh, with that kind of hump section in the middle. Uh, it looks like it's a twin prop um, sub with quite a bit of uh, conning tower uh, detail there up on the top. I don't know if you'll be able to make out uh, any of those photos on the back there, but uh, quite nice as well. I'm not sure how my lighting is going to be in here. We'll have to, I'll have to kind of see and have to bump up my lighting. Um, we can take a look at this one real quick too. I might need to pause here and get something to cut with. Small screwdriver should do the job. So I hope everyone's been, been well during the, because I, you know, I think when I did my last video, maybe the COVID-19 crisis was just kind of starting up. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're a couple months into it now. I uh, hope everybody out there is doing okay. I know we've had uh, at least one staffer that's had um, a child sick at home, and they're pretty sure they have it too. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting times we live in. That old Chinese proverb, which ironically this came from China. So, uh, all right, so interesting color choice for this. All black. <laughs> you don't see that a lot other than maybe in like um, Titanic kits and things like that. So uh, apparently um, Zvezda had some black plastic to use up, so they did. Uh, unless there's some benefit. I mean, I know that it is essentially kind of a, black, a blacked out uh, color scheme, but I don't think it's quite black black. Uh, so, and then they have one of those typical uh, underwater rock uh, stands. Um, you know, I, I may actually build this because I've been kind of, I don't know, submarines. They're always interesting and fun to put together. But uh, anyways, yeah, who am I kidding? I'm not kidding. But, but it might be fun to build. It, it looks like it would be fun to put together fairly. It, lot, you know, but a lot, of, a lot of good detail on this uh, from what the, the rear pictures on their show. So, 1 3 50th scale, by the way, because I didn't say that earlier. And let's see what else we got from Zvezda. I'm not going to open all these up, but um, this one is a civil airliner, the MC-21-300. Uh, I'm not sure, MC, uh, I'm not familiar with that. Let's read the back. Uh, 21st century short medium haul aircraft is a modern Russian passenger aircraft developed and manufactured by the Urquhart Corporation based on the latest technologies they intended to compete with a large scale segment of the airliner market. So, yes. Russian airliners. Um, Soviet tank destroyer Su-122 in 135th scale, so that's a 
probably a nice uh, addition there. I'm not sure they didn't put out something similar to this. This is a, maybe a different variant with the, uh, which gun is this? The 122 millimeter. Yes, 122. SU-122, 122 millimeter. Yes, Jim, that, yeah. Right, um, anyway, so, <laughs> I actually can't believe I did that. Um, well, they do, you know, it does, it does come in different configurations, so, but not in the S1, SU-122, obviously, it's a different one, but and the, some nice photos on the back there of the detail. We will take a look at this one and open it up, because, uh, you know, it's armor, and most of the people out there watching this video probably are armor people, right? And we didn't get a lot of armor in this week. One more, though, after this one. You got you got one more. Stay tuned. Um, oh, and then I have one box from... Uh, where's that box from? Anyways, I have a box here from, from I think, um, Maker AK. I can't remember which. Okay, okay, okay. Typical Sylvester box. Doesn't want to come out. Really, guys, you know, I know you love this sleeve concept thing, but... But, you know, some of us, we're not happy with it. We don't like it. Especially when you're live on camera, you know, and then you gotta open up the other side and, and you gotta push it through, because then it'll come out. I don't know why it does that. It's like a trick, it's like a magic trick. All right, so I think this is a new, a new tool, but maybe not, because it is in their older green plastic. So, um, maybe this is just a re-release. Uh, I'll actually take a look and see if I can find anything with a date on it. Uh, and it's also bagged, and I, I don't remember them bagging a lot of their new stuff recently. So, it kind of says to me, maybe older, older kit. Um, and of course, Devez doesn't put any stamp dates or anything on their kits. Come on, Zavesta. Modernize. And, well, your new kits are modernized, so that's what makes me... I see lots of flash on this, so I'm going to say rebox or re repackaging. But if not, I apologize, and maybe someone will correct me in the comments. But at least it looks like a rebox uh, or an older kit. So that's what we're going to say it is. Because, darn it, join the 20th, 1st century and put dates on your bottom of your things. Because, you know, to me, has only been doing that for, what, since 1970. Um, you think you'd want you'd want it on there just for your own, like, warehouse kind of thing. Which, which kit is that? Right, let's, let's, let's look that up. Um, yeah, there's nothing on here about it. And it doesn't say anything about, you know, about being a new release. Now, the next one, I'm pretty sure, is a new release. Oh. It's a big one. And this is the Russian self-propelled anti-aircraft system, Panzer, 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 Panzer S1, SA-22 Greyhound. Um, so again, a um, looks like I don't know if it's dual uh, guns and surface-to-air missiles. Um, not really sure. It looks like it can, can potentially be both. So uh, let's open this one up and take a look. Also in 135th scale, obviously from the size of the box. And this one is in their their nice newer gray plastic, which seems to indicate a newer kit. Um, and uh, we've got a nice manual, a nice color uh, profile sheet of uh, different camo patterns, and one snow, one green, one tan. Um, some looks like silver decals with a decal sheet and some clear and then some really large sprues all bagged um it's like we got at least one loose piece looks like just a sprue tree piece but um but yeah a lot of uh, a lot of large beefy plastic pieces with uh you know some decent detail on here uh i wouldn't call it like state-of-the-art production and, and or even the best I've seen from Zvezda recently but certainly for the type of vehicle it is um, I see some of the guns that look like the bottom piece is going maybe that's intentional I guess maybe that's how it, how it actually works it's a little bit looking a little weird but maybe that's just the way it is um, sets of rubber tires looks like about uh, ten of them or maybe nine of them 
Um, another bag of plastic with more bits, so a lot of parts for this kit. I uh, don't know if it says on here how many parts, but uh, you can see uh, more photos on the back here of the kit. And uh, this one is uh, designed in 1994 and was adopted by military use in 2010. Wow. Started in, oh, the, the design started in 1994 and it was finally adopted into the military in 2010. That took a while. <laughs> that took a long while. Um, the unit is equipped with uh, two two large 3D radar systems with a phased array antenna, auto cannon with rapid firing guns, and radio controlled missiles. So it does have both guns and missiles. Very very, you know, uh, rugged looking truck though. It'd probably make a great diorama, especially in a snow snow environment or something like that. Okay, I guess it was uh, less than I thought. Um, it was a box, but it didn't have that much in it. Just the um, and it does come from ammo. Um, of MIG, and this is a super pack um, winter camouflage, winter white, uh, white winter camouflage solution set. Uh, it's marked SP02 and it has a MIG product number of 7803. But basically, it includes um, washable white camo, uh, matte white, um, a white uh, um, oil brusher. Um, a rust uh, streaking tube, you know, thing that you, you do, um, uh, like the oil brusher, a winter grime streaker, and then it includes uh, streaming uh, grime for winter vehicles uh, in a paint uh, set and a neutral wash, uh, as well as heavy chipping effects, and then two filters, a brown for white and a dark gray for white, and the thing come in here like this with uh, launching paints. Um, I have to note that um, one of these came out really stinky. I think it was the heavy cheap chipping thing. So even though they wrapped all this up and stuff, and it looks like I'm maybe missing a little bit, although not a lot, but it definitely, when it's laid down on these side things and jostled around and, and shipping and stuff, they, they, they don't want to stay, uh, stay in there. I'm not sure what kind of seals they put in these. I mean, I'm going to break the seal on this. It's just the standard uh, paper or whatever, um, you know, thingy at the top. But they maybe should consider rubber seals or something because it was definitely, I just got some on me right there. Um, and I didn't even, you know, all I did was open it and close it. So um, that set is available from them as well as they sent me these new, what they're calling um, shaders. They're in small black application bottles like this, and uh, this one is light rust, and I assume it is a um, kind of a just a drop, you know, bottle uh, applicator, you know, like where you can you know put out x amount of droplets. And they have sent me light rust, earth, violet, dark green, military green, dirt, and sky blue. So I don't know much about them. You can probably go on their website, uh, like their, their YouTube page or whatever, and take a look, and they may have put out a video or something, a tutorial on using these. But if not, I'm sure one will come out shortly uh, to show what they're for. So, And uh, I'd like to thank Zvezda, MIG, um, Kitty Hawk, and uh, IBG for sending us these samples. Kind of glad we didn't get a ton more in. <laughs> um, I'm already sitting on quite a few that still need... Uh, uh, reviewers and people to work on so if you guys are interested in doing any reviews uh, for these samples uh, or features or whatever online blogging da -da -da -da, go out to our link area information here which will, which will go to the various pages on our Google Drive setup which will show you what's available and you can see and there's contact emails in there to who to contact for you know getting what sample or to request a sample uh, making a request doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it, obviously. We still need to kind of uh, um, check you out and see if you have any background or if you, we've worked with you before or what your status is and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, we do usually ask for um, shipping, uh, reciprocal shipping, because uh, some, sending some of this stuff out to 
especially well, even sending in the United States now, but even sending it overseas and stuff is pro prohibitively kind of expensive. So, like for example, this kit right here, I doubt I'll be sending overseas just because the size of the box, the weight, and everything, it, it ends up being close to the price of basically buying buying a kit. So we try to find people a little closer, and even sending it to Canada is price prohibitive. So, but if you're willing to pay the you know the $35, 50 dollars, whatever it is, to send it, then you know that makes it a lot easier to to say okay. Um, all right. So um, anything else I want to go over? Not really. Working on some updates uh, for the site that hopefully uh, we can roll out in the next six months or so. These are basically massive kind of things, um, and. Uh, I was looking at moving the site over to a new server, but that was going to be a problem because if I do that, then I have to update, I don't know, maybe like 10,000 lines of code. And I'm not really, um, I'm not really ready to do 10,000 line of code updates at the moment because um, that is literally 24 seven work for days and days and days and days and days. Um, so yeah. Um, that was that was a possibility at least to try to try to just move the site over to a new server. But since we can't do that, we're going to need to move the site over eventually. Our current server is going to phase out uh, support for the software that we're running uh, at like the end of the year. I think it doesn't mean that the server will just stop, but it means that the server will no longer even get any kind of updates or um, security patches and things like that. So um, that's a problem, and uh, so we we need to, to basically kind of revamp and my timing is kind of interesting because obviously the site turns 20 uh at the end of uh 2021 so uh we'll be kind of somewhere in this range of close to our 20th birthday we'll maybe have armor emma uh, 2020 i guess <laughs> we're not going to call it version whatever because you know that they don't do that anymore um so yeah um uh, well, it won't be Armorama 2020. It'll be Kitmaker 2020 with all the sites basically being the same same uh, format and system and login, just like we have today. Uh, anyways, so uh, that is about all I have uh, for you guys. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please put them below. Uh, please like this video if you liked it. If not, you know, walk away. Just walk away. Um, we will see you next time on Mail Call.